this video delves deep into the concept of selection. Now, the previous video showed one example of how this can be carried out in an evolutionary algorithm, but there are actually many different ways to carry out selection. What you saw in the previous video was that at generation zero, we had some number of individuals in the population, and we got the next generation by using a mixture of mutation and crossover to create completely new individuals. So here we have solutions zero through four, and now we're generating new solutions, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. But let's look at variations on this scheme and also at the details of how these decisions are made. So the first thing to be aware of is the concept of elitism. In this example, all members of the new population were different from their parents. Now, they're likely very similar, and hopefully they're better, but they may not be better at all. It's possible for all of the offspring to be worse than the parents. Using elitism guarantees that the best individuals seen so far remain in the population. For example, for this size five population, if we had a 20% elitism rate, that would mean that we copy the top 20% of the parent population directly into the next child population which for five individuals is a single parent. So in this example, we would have individuals zero through four, and to understand what's happening here, we need to know their fitness values, which are as follows. And because we have a 20% elitism rate, this means that we take the top 20% and copy them directly into the next generation. So here we have generation zero, and now we'll have generation one, which will contain S1 copied because 15 is the largest fitness value here. For the remaining slots in this next generation, we use mutation and crossover as usual. And we would get several new individuals, five, six, seven, However, there's still the question of how we choose parents from this generation to get these offspring here. That can also be done, at least in part, by elitism. For example, we could decide that the top 20% of individuals in this generation get to be parents for the next generation. In this case, that would still leave some slots unfilled, and so we would have to have a way of filling the remaining slots in the next generation. Something to keep in mind through all of this discussion is that many of these techniques can be mixed and matched to fit your needs. When you are not using elitism, it is often the case that fitness proportionate selection is used. This is also known as roulette wheel selection. This is an older selection approach which has been superseded recently, but it still has its uses. It works as follows. We take the fitness values and add them up. And the reason we do this is so that we can divide each individual fitness value by the sum to figure out what percentage of all the total fitness that one fitness value makes up. And so the percentages in this case would be as follows. Doing this allows us to use a random number generator to pick individuals from the population based on what proportion of the total fitness they use up. 
a useful visualization tool is a roulette wheel or a pie chart, hence the name roulette wheel selection. It would look like the following. Now you can see that if we had a needle pointing at this and we spun the wheel, we would be more likely to land on slices that took up more space of the roulette wheel. As a result, this selection approach favors individuals with higher fitness, but still gives individuals with lower fitness a chance to create offspring. And as we mentioned before, this can be useful in escaping local optima and in general searching the space of solutions in a better way. Unfortunately, this approach can only be used if all fitness values are positive. If there are negative fitness values, then there's no sensible way to place those values on the roulette wheel. Furthermore, if there is lots of variance in the magnitude of fitness values, there may be a very skewed effect in how individuals are selected. So a somewhat better approach that is more commonly used today is tournament selection. Now this approach involves use of a parameter k for the tournament size and it's very common to use a size of two and what this means is we randomly select k number of individuals from the population so i could randomly choose s3 and s4 and then i compare their fitness values Of these two individuals, S3 has the highest fitness value, so it would be selected to either be a parent or to create a mutated clone or for whatever other purpose I desire. If I increase the tournament size to three, then I would randomly select three individuals from the population. And so out of these three individuals, this one has the highest fitness and therefore it would be selected. It should be noted here that it is not strictly necessary to use fitness values for selection. For example, if we were evolving checkers players, you could choose the best checkers player by having two checkers playing solutions play each other. The winner would be selected and the loser would not. This is an example of co-evolution, which we will talk about at a later date. One more issue to discuss is a selection approach known as mu, comma, lambda, and an approach called mu plus lambda. Mu and lambda are Greek letters that are parameters describing how selection is carried out. In a mu comma lambda, lambda selection scheme, it is necessary for lambda to be greater than or equal to mu. In fact, if they are equal, then it is very similar to the situation we've seen so far because a mu comma lambda scheme simply means that mu parents create lambda number of children. In mu comma lambda, we choose the best mu children from the available lambda children to be the next generation. However, if lambda is greater than mu, then we will have generated more children for the next generation than we actually need. In contrast, mu plus lambda means we have mu parents and lambda children, but we select the next generation of mu parents from this combined population. This example looks like the following. 
let's say that mu is 5 and lambda is 3. That means we would have a parent population of five solutions. And then these five parents would generate lambda number of children, in this case three, and I'll use a different letter for them. And the way you generate these can be just like any of these other approaches where you use either tournament selection or fitness proportionate selection to choose who is a parent and who is uh, generating these children. And then from this combined population of eight, we get the next generation by selecting the best mu number of individuals. So for example, it may turn out that the best individuals are S1, S2, S4, C1, C2. As you can see, there are many different ways to perform selection in evolutionary algorithms. But all of them will take a population and give you another population which, in general, should be slightly better. If you repeat this process over and over again, you'll get better and better individuals in your population.